Good morning. Welcome to the second Linux Foundation Europe Member Summit. I am excited, excited to have you here. Um, for those of you who have been here for the whole week, uh, thank you for your endurance. <laughs> and uh, I'm certainly starting to feel a little <laughs> slower the, uh, on Thursday. We've been here since, since Monday with very limited sleep, but it's been a very exciting week, I think. Um, and yesterday night at the reception, I know many of you came uh, specifically for this event, so I am very thankful to those of you who traveled. Um, definitely easier to travel later in the week, I think, than you know over the weekend. It was a little bit of a uh, unseasonal weather, I would say. So again, um, we're very, very excited. Um, it's been a... You know, it's been a momentous year for uh, open source, for the Linux Foundation, and, and for Linux Foundation Europe. So I'd love to uh, spend a couple of minutes telling you what we've been um, up to. And most importantly, I think we have a, a great schedule ahead of us. Um, so I think many of you have already heard way too much from me uh, for the, for the, in, the other, in the previous three days of the week. So I would love to leave the stage to uh, some very, very compelling speakers. Um, yeah, very excited. So a um, couple of uh, housekeeping notes before uh, we get started. All of our events uh, follow the um, Linux Foundation events code of conduct. Um, if you have any issues, we have plenty of folks from the Linux Foundation, please reach out. Um, here's the session locations, uh, the break meals, we have plenty of time to network. Um, oftentimes the most important uh, uh, aspect of these, these uh, meetings. Uh, and you have the uh, emergency exit marked clearly throughout the venue. Uh, as well as the official hashtag, in case you want to get social. Uh, I don't know if uh, some of you may know that uh, I do Linux Foundation Europe and I run Finos, which is our fintech open source foundation. And well, banks are not really very social friendly, uh, but I hope you guys, if you want, feel free to uh, 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 engage and, and promote if there's content that you like. It always helps us uh, in terms of reach. Um, we have on-site resources, uh, Zen Zone, where you can take a break if you, you know, heard enough of me and, uh, <laughs> and of us, um, and all gender bath uh, restrooms, as well as uh, a nursing room. And you have the Wi-Fi down there. Should be also on your badge, I believe. Uh, um, so, okay. As I said, let's get started. It's been a very, very uh, exciting year in, in many ways uh, for us. This is our second year. Um, for, I know there are some new faces here, uh, you know, many members, of course, but also we have external speakers. We have new folks that just joined. So I figured I just did a quick uh, uh, introductory hat as to what Linux Foundation Europe does and what it is. Um, so our tagline is uh, collaborate locally, innovate globally. I guess it's really hard for me not to move around. Um, what does that mean? So we think that uh, um, open source is global, and I hope you guys agree. Uh, but Linux Foundation Europe provides a way to focus on priorities that are aligned with Europe. Uh, that means uh, that we can start projects and host projects in Europe. Uh, but really, the idea is not to fragment the ecosystem, is not to fall into sort of the trap of, of the open source balkanization, which I've seen uh, sort of in the rise over the last few years. Um, and so I left Linux Foundation Europe is a subsidiary of the Linux Foundation based in Brussels uh, that allows to you know, uh, host projects uh, uh, in the EU. Um, I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Um, as I said, we host projects. We want to keep open source global. Oh, yeah, that, that'd be good. Thank you. Hello? Yeah, I think it's probably easier. Um, 
whilst we can focus on what we call European strong projects, whether it be uh, in the interest of European members, in the interest in aligned with sort of uh, local public sector priorities, um, we want to keep it global. Uh, and so think about LF Europe as an entry point to the global Linux Foundation platform. Um, we continue to foster the understanding of what open source can do for different actors, not just for technology, not just for developers. Uh, we talked about this week about um, our engagement with the public sector. I'll have a couple of examples, and we'll hear about it today quite a bit, as well as, uh, again, engagement in traditional industries. Every industry is undergoing a digital transformation, and effectively, open source is a key pillar for that. Uh, we, again, have experienced it firsthand with banks, which I would say are not the sort of most naturally collaborative uh, industry in the world. Um, and we think there's a lot of potential to accelerate that in Europe as well. And then last but not least, what would you expect uh, uh, engaging better with the local community? We are, the Linux Foundation is a, a globally distributed organization, and so having a focus uh, and presence, growing presence in, in Europe, even from our team, beyond you know, our members and our projects, which are already pretty much uh, spread across regions quite evenly, uh, really helps us to uh, connect and grow our communities. Um, all, all the best communities are, are built over a beer or a mocktail, whatever. Uh, makes sense to you. Uh, and you know that allows us to also provide um, European specific benefits on addition, in addition to sort of the, the uh, Linux Foundation benefits uh, to our members. Um, in terms of our goals, um, we want to grow adoption and contribution to our project portfolio. Uh, so, you know, I always start from what kind of business value our projects can deliver to organizations. Um, and this allows us to focus on the needs of, of Europe. Uh, we want to, again, expand the participation, the influence, and funding, of course, of the private sector and, and public sector in Europe. Uh, the Linux Foundation over the last 20 years having did a fantastic job in um, helping the open source projects through corporate funding. I think we're entering in a new stage, as I talked earlier in the week, where uh, also the private sector, sorry, the public sector uh, is becoming a first class citizen and, and ought to contribute and participate uh, to what effectively constitutes uh, critical infrastructure and digital public good. Um, we host projects in Europe, we talked about that, and yeah, I, I, when I took this job uh, two years ago, uh, I didn't think I would be as involved as I've been in policy, and uh, um, you know, maybe I should have known better, but it's certainly been uh, an uptake, uh, especially at EU level of uh, you know, software regulation, which of course, as, as open source is an absolutely critical part of software, fundamental part of software, uh, we have to deal with. We're not a lobbying organization. This is not what we're going to ever become, but uh, we certainly had to um, grow up as open source communities in terms of the way we, we engage with policymakers. Um, <laughs> talking about member benefits, um, I just came back last week from paternity leave, so uh, <laughs> apologies I'm a little rusty. Um, and I announced uh, on the stage on Monday that you know I would be sharing baby pictures. These are obviously just for this meeting, this is way more than the one that I've shown to the uh, broader public, which if it wasn't incredibly self-referential, I would say is actually a member benefit, but I would probably uh, uh, move on. But yes, I, I, uh, it's been an amazing summer, and uh, yeah, I, I'm still sort of getting back up uh, uh, at the top of my performances from a, from a, a work standpoint. Um, we have 173 members. Um, for those of you who don't know, Linux Foundation members join Linux Foundation Europe 
uh, for free. It's a reciprocal organization, it's a reciprocal membership, and sort of the other way around. So, uh, of course, if you join through Linux Foundation Europe, then you're part of the global uh, Linux Foundation uh, platform. We welcome so many members this year, I think over 25, and we are, again, very thankful to all of you. It wouldn't be possible to keep growing uh, the team and our operations in Europe without your support. Yeah, that's the pretty logo slide. Uh, um, as I said before, even before we launched Linux Foundation Europe, about 33% of our uh, uh, support and members came from Europe. Um, but this allows us to really uh, focus, uh, again, on the priorities and better service our community and communities, both projects and members in this space. We have five projects that are hosted in LF Europe. And again, think about this as a part of the global over 800 projects that the Linux Foundation hosts um, across very different uh, areas. Uh, in 2022, we launched Silva, the telco, sort of vertical uh, um, side, uh, Open Wallet Foundation, you probably have heard about it, you will hear about it a lot, quite a bit today, I think. Um, Rise, on the RISC-V software ecosystem. Um, Servo, uh, uh, a, a Rust-based browser engine. And Open Mobile App is the new addition from this year. You'll hear it quite a bit today. Uh, you know. Lots of potential to democratize the, the mobile ecosystem and provide a better developer experience there. So I guess I just wanted to show the sort of breadth of projects from some much more sort of industrially aligned, uh, some more horizontal like Open Wallet in terms of public private sector uh, collaborations, uh, and some others quite, you know, open hardware uh, on the Risk Five side, and then some very much aligned to, um, you know, provide a. Um, but you know, grassroots community growing uh, into uh, uh, Europe. I want to make sure that I'm already over time, so I probably should get going. Uh, but uh, our team, uh, um, our team is uh, growing. Uh, make sure that you, if you haven't met them already, you meet them today. Uh, I want to send a shout out to them also for. Uh, uh, you know, really did, doing a fantastic job while I was out over the last couple of months. Um, I'm not going to ask you to show yourself, but you know where you are. Mirko, Esther, Federica, and Kaylin. And of course, Hilary is our uh, VP of Research and uh, Communications at the Linux Foundation. She's been amazingly supportive of the work that we've done in LF Europe. Um, knowing that I am quite a bit over time. I just wanted to give you a couple of highlights of beyond the growth in projects and members what we did uh, this year, and then uh, pass to much smarter folks than, than me on the agenda. Um, as I said, you know, you're probably are familiar with the work that uh, we do with communities, uh, uh, grassroots developers. You probably are familiar with the sort of uh, collaborations that we are able to build between corporates uh, and uh, individuals through our open governance. But over the last year, we really invested in uh, um, growing an engagement with the public sector, whether it be participating to EU consortium, consortia like uh, NGI, NGI <coughs> Commons, winning grants, applying for grants on behalf of our projects. That's absolutely one uh, additional value that uh, LF Europe can add to your projects or complement private funding with public funding. Uh, whether it be working with uh, um, in the standardization processes, sort of bridging the gap between uh, uh, open source and open standards. Uh, our, you'll hear it later today, our Open Wallet launched a partnership with the ITU earlier this year to build uh, standards um, on the wallet side, as well as participating in we were, we were actually the first open source foundation invited to participate to the EU multi-stakeholder uh, uh, platform for standardization in uh, ICT, uh, alongside many sort of well-renowned SDOs. Uh, and that really helps us, hopefully, again, bridging this gap, making sure that uh, you know, open source and open standards are colliding, but they're coming from very different backgrounds and very different sort of 
uh, cultural approaches and sometimes even licenses. Uh, and so we think we can play uh, an important role there. I will not um, go in the details of the CRA, Cyber Resilience Act. We have pretty uh, uh, substantial content today. Where, uh, we talk to you what are we planning to do to support our projects and our members. But uh, as you can imagine, this is a big priority for us. It's been a priority in terms of getting where the final legislation uh, uh, has ended and uh, educating our community and supporting our projects. Um, and then something that is you know, near and dear to my heart, but uh, quite, um, I think, important for the next five, 10 years, we're seeing a, a very strong acceleration of uh, sort of awareness of the role that open source can have uh, as a societal impact in the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, the UN hosted a conference earlier this year uh, called OSPO for Good. Uh, we are seeing so much uh, movement in that space. And in fact, some of our team members, Daniel, uh, Kaylin, will be in Cairo at the Global uh, Digital Public Infrastructure Summit uh, later this year. Now, uh, I generally do a joke on stereotypical joke on um, Italians, you know, I'm Italian, um, but I've been recommended not to. So I decided to do a joke on myself. As you can see, I was working really hard at the United Nations. You <laughs> uh, see the difference between a, you know, an Italian and well, I guess I did a joke on Italians in the end. Um, and, and an Austrian, you know, I can. <laughs> um, Daniel, you're probably going to meet him later today. Thank it. I just can't do it. Um, I want to close as I'm running uh, quite over time here. But uh, in case you don't know, we run uh, with the support of Hillary, the New York Foundation Research Team, uh, an early report on. Um, open source in Europe. And this is our third year. Uh, we, we launched, uh, when we launched in 2022, we started running this uh, you know, research report. And this year, uh, there's been some really interesting funding. We announced this uh, earlier in the week. Um, you know, it really sh goes to show here are some highlights. Uh, again, I really recommend you to download and read the report uh, in detail. But you know, the TLDR, the long and short is, uh, 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 open source is maturing quite quickly in Europe, and AI is seen, unsurprisingly, as a major opportunity for collaboration, for open source. Uh, and again, not just in, from a technical perspective, but from a uh, uh, you know, startup, uh, uh, sort of economic development, and of course, societal and sort of responsible to all the angles of responsible AI. So again, um, could probably talk for hours about uh, how, how valuable this report is for us. I hope you find it useful as, as well, but it certainly serves for us to set the direction as we enter uh, sort of the planning phase for, for next year. Um, I want to send a shout out to the To Do Group as we continue to try and uh, uh, enable industries and, and uh, companies to work in open source. The To Do Group uh, is our organization. For all of you, it's accessible to all of the members of the Linux Foundation at no additional cost um, to really enable uh, 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 sort of companies to be first class citizens in uh, the open source community, both in terms of contribution, uh, consumption, and you know, ultimately business value. We'll hear a lot about this. We have some really amazing speakers today, but uh, unsurprisingly, talking about AI, um, not only there is a huge opportunity uh, for open source AI, but it's also paramount that we get it right. Uh, Stefano, the, the executive director of the OSI, is here together to, with some, some really compelling speakers uh, as the community is looking to actually define very much what it means. Uh, what open source AI uh, uh, is. Um, I'm not going to go too much into the detail, but uh, you know, there's obviously impacts, as we said, on, on responsibility, in, on, on uh, you know, econ the economy, and very much 
you know, something that the open source community is, is quite familiar uh, with, uh, open washing. Uh, if you don't know what that is, it's the practice of willing or unwittingly calling something open source when actually it's not. Um, as I said, Stefan and USI are, are working to define uh, what open source AI means. Uh, but earlier this year, we also uh, we start, we needed to start giving guidance to our communities. The Linux Foundation is a trusted uh, uh, is trusted to host some of the most relevant projects and sort of critical infrastructure in the world. So earlier in the year, our uh, Generative AI Commons Foundation released uh, the model Openness Framework, uh, um, which really provides a gradient of uh, how to evaluate the openness and the completeness of a model uh, on the basis of uh, the different components that make up a model, uh, data, code, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, it's based on the principles of open science. If you go to isitopen.ai, you'll see um, several models that have been already submitted for evaluation uh, in terms of how open they are. And I think this is my last slide. I only spoke twice as much as I should have. So pretty good. No Italian jokes. Yeah. Um, I really want to thank you for being here, uh, especially with the, the inclement weather earlier in the week. And I hope you have a, a, a great week. I look forward to uh, talking to, to all of you. I see so many new faces. So again, thank you so much and welcome. <laughs>